and uh, this actually draws on uh, work that Maggie and Roderick did, and of course it was also part of a project that uh, Maggie and uh, Roderick led. Um, but of course, structural change in Ghana is interesting um, for a number of reasons. One being the fact that indeed um, when one looks at economic performance in Africa today, Ghana will usually be some of us uh, the um, quote-unquote class act. Um, but also interesting is the fact that um, Ata Lewis, who um, is very well known for his work on um, the um, dual economy uh, models, was an advisor to the first president of independent Ghana. And it is reported that Lewis actually advised Ghana against the path that he chose at the time. And so Lewis actually um, suggested that in terms of the sequencing, Ghana focused more on the agri sector rather than the industrialization push that it actually pursued at the time. And so Ghana is, and of course, Ghana is always an interesting case. So in terms of outline, um, just talk uh, briefly, introduce uh, the paper, talk a little bit, set the context by talking a little bit about the patterns of um, development in Ghana. Uh, these days, it's even boring to talk about it because everybody knows it. Um, just highlight the methodology which uh, was suggested uh, by um, Maggie and uh, Danny Roderick, and then discuss the results and then uh, present some concluding uh, comments. Of course, the standard um, transfer, structural transformation models will typically distinguish between the labor push, uh, labor pool uh, models, where essentially for the labor pool, you expect that with industrialization, labor is drawn from the agricultural sector to the um, industrial sector or the manufacturing sector. For the labor push, it's a result of the green revolution and therefore um, the agri sector then releases labor to or for the um, modern sector. In either one of the two cases, what happens is that labor is actually released from um, a low productivity to a high productivity um, sector. So for this paper, what we did was to essentially ask the question of what the patterns of structural change has been with respect to Ghana over the last century. Um, the nature of the change in particular, whether the source of the productivity changes emanated from just economy-wide changes in um, sectors, or the sources actually emanated from changing uh, resource allocation with respect to labor, i.e. moving labor um, from uh, low productive areas to high productivity areas. And indeed, of course, uh, whether the changing structure is growth enhancing. Now this is interesting for two primary reasons, I would suggest. One being the fact that indeed understanding whether the current growth path that a country such as Ghana is on is sustainable is important. But also understanding what the employment implications are for the growth path is also uh, something that interests um, many. So this is just to show that we are down here and we want to get here. Okay. Now for Ghana's per capita um, GDP in terms of its evolution um, from 1960 to 2010, we identify at least three, but there could be more, three interesting turning points. One, during uh, the early, well, to mid-1970s, when the very consistent coup d'etats um, started or 
actually persisted. And then, of course, the very well-documented um, collapse of the Ghanaian economy in 1983 and the resurrection, which resulted from the uh, Structural Adjustment Program. But also, a very interesting one relates to the last um, decade or so, where we've begun to see some signs of an acceleration in growth. So not only have we recovered from the mid-80s uh, levels of per capita GDP, but the GDP per capita growth seemed to be actually accelerating or has accelerated um, over the last uh, decade or so. In terms of the composition of GDP, now, okay, so this isn't very clear. The very dark line is the services sector. The next in that order is the agric. And if you look at the composition or the share of um, the three sectors in GDP in 1960, you do find that agric was contributing over 40%. And by the late, or by 2010, Agric's contribution had dropped quite significantly by over 10 percentage points. Now, industry you can literally ignore. Nothing has happened, right? Um, in terms of the share, well, something has happened in between the two periods. But in terms of the share, the share in 2010 was about the same as the share of industry in 1960 in terms of GDP. Now again, if you look at it in terms of the employment, um, again, industry is a loner. It's down there doing its own thing. But what has happened with respect to the services sector is that it has increasingly picked up uh, with respect to its contribution to employment, whereas also the agric sector seem to have uh, experienced a decline. So for the agricultural sector, both the share in GDP as well as in employment seem to have declined. It's not so obvious immediately the implications for productivity, right? But we'll see what has happened. For industry, probably there is little change in productivity, probably. For services, We've seen an increase in the GDP share. We've seen also an increase in its share with respect to employment. So again, the question is whether indeed that has resulted in employment, in sort of uh, productivity uh, changes over the years. Now, if you look at the individual sectors, the subsectorial compositions, you do find that the decline in the agricultural sector, part of that story is due to the cocoa, okay, cocoa subsector. But also, so the cocoa subsector has actually declined. Um, for the forestry, the decline has been relatively marginal, okay. For the industrial sector, the construction sector has actually picked up um, after actually uh, dropping significantly in the mid-1980s. Um, for manufacturing, you find that the levels in 2010 is not significantly different from the manufacturing share um, in uh, 1960s. For the services, which is also the very interesting one, you do find that transport, storage, communication has become very important. Um, but also, what seems to be moving upwards, at least in the last uh, 20 or so years, is the wholesale uh, retail trade um, sector. So within the subsectors, again, you do find not significant um, movements, 
except for the fact that your cocoa sector, which has been the dominant sector um, over the last half century, seems to have actually reduced in importance um, in Ghana. So this is, the, in essence, the result with respect to productivity. Um, sectorial per capita, sectorial GDP per capita, we find that the services sector has actually picked up somewhat or quite a bit uh, compared to the 19 or early 1960s uh, levels. Agriculture compared to the 1960s level has actually um, declined. Um, for the industry, you find again that there has been some marginal increase at least in the last uh, few years. And um, it is not too difficult to see or to imagine where that change is coming from. Okay, the mining sector, but also the fact that Ghana has become um, an oil producer. And from 2009, we started actually, the oil revenue started hitting um, the accounts. And therefore, it started reflecting in the um, industrial sector. Now, so just by looking at the shares with respect to GDP, with respect to employment, you do find that, well, there is some action with respect to services sector in particular becoming increasingly more important, but also the agriculture sector losing its importance. But what about the export composition? Now, if you look at the export composition, uh, as I mentioned earlier, the cocoa sector has actually declined with respect uh, for the last few years compared to what it was in the early um, 1960s. But mining, as I mentioned, has actually picked up particularly. If, if, uh, if you have the, the relative shares here, I don't understand how the total can be less than 100%. Which, your, your blue line is the total. No, so you have non-traditional uh, exports. So these are just the traditional exports. These are the traditional, oh. the main commodity exports. So we do have the non-traditional exports, but that is not plotted. So the difference between uh, the, uh, the blue line, let's say in 2010, which is around 80, and 100% would be the remaining exports. Absolutely. So, so I get extra five. No, 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 that's fine. I just, no, five. <laughs> Okay, so also just a plot of the economic complexity in this, which essentially reflects the export composition, also would suggest that there hasn't been much change with respect to uh, the structure of the economy. So when you're looking at the shares, the contribution of the shares, there seem to be some movement with respect to services with respect to agriculture. However, when you're looking at the composition of exports, there has been some movement, but that movement hasn't been great, okay? So as I mentioned, again, this we don't need to um, waste time on this. Uh, the per capita GDP is a component of two things, right? Labor productivity and the activity rate. For Ghana, the activity rate has remained at about 40% over uh, the period, and so it hasn't changed by much. So for the per capita GDP, what it suggests is that what is actually changing is the productivity. But which arm of the productivity? Now, the change in productivity is decomposed into the within productivity, within sector productivity growth, but also the productivity growth which results from the reallocation uh, of uh, labor across the different sectors. And so, and that's some of the results that Maggie showed, essentially based on this decomposition. So based on that, we can then address the question of what has actually uh, been the driver of productivity changes in Ghana over um, the last half uh, century. 
Okay, so employment data, we've used some employment data based on the Living Standards Service as well as the census um, that have been contacted over um, these uh, years. Now, the first interesting point, okay, so I think I'll, I'll try and finish. Five, that is excluding the one minute. <laughs> okay, so I guess the main point um, worth noting here uh, in this table, well, two main points. One, the fact that overall economy-wide productivity in Ghana is about 10 times less than the world average, or the average for the set of countries that is in uh, Macmillan and Roderick 2011. But also, if you look at the respective sectorial productivities, you do find that the respective productivity, uh, respective sector productivities are much lower than that for almost for the average for all the other countries as well. So generally suggesting that productivity, there has been some productivity changes in Ghana, but really it hasn't been spectacular. In terms of the decomposition of the productivity growth, um, so this is the annual growth in productivity over the respective periods here. This is the within productivity contribution for that productivity growth. That is the structural change, the contribution due to the reallocation of resources. Now you note that for the period up to 1970, there was some changes due to the reallocation of resources. But it wasn't great, right? It wasn't in terms of the magnitude. But it still was reinforcing the overall productivity changes within the economy. However, generally up to 1992, I think that the results point to the fact that the reallocation of uh, resource effects here was generally um, growth reducing. So the change was not actually enhancing growth, but rather um, growth reducing. And indeed, over the 1784 period, not surprisingly, you saw the first graph, the productivity changes even within sectors, um, on average, had actually declined over the period. Okay, so productivity growth, mainly you can say, in terms of the structural change or growth, of it being growth enhancing, there has been some effects probably from the 1992 period um, to date. However, um, again, the structural change components remain still quite um, low. Concluding comments. <laughs> so the results for Ghana clearly are not entirely optimistic, right? Um, so Ghana has witnessed significant growth from the mid-80s to date. And as I mentioned, there seems to be some acceleration in growth, particularly over the last 10 um, or so years of the sample, where growth has averaged over 5%. Uh, Indeed, there has been, the pluses are that there has been increased productivity growth after 1992, and the structural component seems to be mostly positive, which means that um, <coughs> Allocation of resources or reallocation of resources or labor resources have been actually growth enhancing over the period. But if you just oppose that to the um, decline in the economy in the 1980s, essentially you note that productivity changes haven't been that high in Ghana, given that literally the economy collapsed in 1983. So, of course, once you are at a very low level, the probability of growing fastest should be higher, right? So, the productivity changes haven't been that high. 
the economy has experienced, okay, so I'm done. The economy has experienced some structural change, but it hasn't come with any form of industrialization. It hasn't come with any form of green revolution. In terms of moving forward, um, there are inherent structural difficulties with respect to the economy, even if it were to experience a green revolution. Now, some of that structural change uh, Marcus talked about, some Maggie also talked about, relates to the human capital. Okay, so the human capital in Ghana, even if compared to sub-Saharan Africa on average, it's not too bad, still there are rigidities with respect to moving labor and block from, say, the agricultural sector to manufacturing because of um, the um, literacy or educational uh, levels. But also policy coordination, high labor costs, means that Ghana is not necessarily going to be excessively competitive compared to some of the um, Asian economies. And therefore, that is the end. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much.